All right, Pat Jensen here again in Montana. Um, you're hearing lots of rumors that uh, guys are having wolves uh, bite a snare off. Uh, I can only think of one animal in my life that's ever bitten a snare off, so we're going to go back and cover how I'm doing my snare sets, what I'm using for cables, uh, and as well as choke uh, methods of choking and, and the angles you want for choking. Uh, first off, I don't like to use all of my my cable for, for one snare set. I want to have a secondary anchor cable that I'm going to run my, my snare to. going to have several benefits on this. Uh, first one's going to be by the time you start buying cable and you catch a, a wolf or a coyote or whatever and it breaks that cable, if you use seven or eight foot of cable in your snare, you've just burned up seven or eight foot of cable. Whereas if you use an anchor cable and a four four to five foot snare, you're only going to be out four to five foot of, of snare. You know, this is going to be something that if you do a lot of snaring and you got a lot of snares out, it's going to help cost effectively uh, get you in the game for as minimal amount of money as possible. Um, a lot of guys are using an eighth inch cable for their snares. I think that's a little small for wolves, uh, great for coyotes, a little small for wolves. I like using a 332nd. Um, just one cam lock and I've got one swivel on the end that's going to allow that animal to struggle as it chokes out without kinking my cable or, or breaking it. Um, one of the big things I see is, oh, where is it? Guys will take and they want to use that seven or eight foot cable and then they want to run that cable around a, a tree and they've got a loop on the end to go through it so you got your, your tree and what you end up with, hopefully you can see that there what you end up with is one cable rubbing against another cable now this may be aircraft cable, it may have uh, strong tensile strength but it's not designed to kink or run against it itself. Uh, what you're doing there is you're basically taking that cable and you're making a file out of it. So uh, it's just going to file back and forth. So uh, what I'll usually do and to show you a correct setup here What you should do is you'll take both loops, you'll take your two loops, one loop inside of the other, and then run your, your snare through the loop on your snare, pull that tight, that's going to allow you to then fold that edge over, we'll see if we can get this again on camera, so now you've got more surface area on your snare where the cable is riding on both edges versus your cable just loop through the end that's going to make a file out of it. This is going to be much stronger obviously more surface area the better. Uh, the idea in, in choking out an animal in the snare is you know I'm sure a lot of you have heard the expression uh, give a man enough rope he'll hang himself. Same thing with, with your predators. That's why your long anchor cable is going to be beneficial to you. This one here is probably eight foot long. Now, if I'm going to run this through a, a tree, because it's twice the diameter of my actual snare that I intend on choking the animal out with, I can get away with going through the tree and having that, that loop that would normally create a, turn up and create as a file. Um, because I've got twice the size cable, I've got a much stronger cable. Uh, most of your choking out is going to be done in the first 20, 20 to 30 seconds anyway. So you're going to want to remember uh, whatever you're tying off to, if, if you've got a good solid tree there, you want to get over your head as high as you could reach on that tree and that's going to give you the added leverage because that animal is going to be trying to pull down as it chokes out and away from your anchor point.
So the higher you've got it, the better of, the more leverage you've got on the, on the throat itself. Um, what else? The swivels. Um, that, that's another, another good thing. Actually, let me get back to this real quick. If you don't have a, a good strong tree, if you're, if you're anchoring off to a ground stake or, or a brush pile, uh, this again is going to be where the added length is going to help you. Any animal that gets caught in a snare, if, you, if you're talking a four or five foot snare, he's going to be able to see immediately the, the point that's holding him. So if, if an animal's in a snare and tries to turn around, he's going to be biting where you've anchored to. You've obviously anchored to a, a very solid spot. So if he's going to bite that, he's going to be biting against a solid object. Versus if you got eight feet, this is again where, where the saying comes, you give enough man enough rope, he's going to hang himself. Uh, this will give you enough length for that animal to then get out, wrap up around some smaller brush or something of that nature, and then bite at that brush rather than your actual anchor point. Uh, an animal bite through a, a cable, I, I just don't buy it. Uh, I, I really think a lot of it is cables fraying from um, misused um, connections. I, I really think that's what starts a lot of it. Uh, they, there's a lot of strength in these animals, and if they get a kink or a, or a fray in, in a cable and they work it back and forth enough, I mean, I could, I could take one of these cables myself and inside of an hour, I could, I could probably break that cable apart. So again, you know, your, your cable strength is, is measured in tension pulling one way or another. It's, it's not, your, your strength of your cable isn't measured by the ability of um, friction against the sides of it. It's, it's, it's to pull straight. Um, so anyhow, let's, uh, let's go to cam locks here. Um, Here's one, we'll see if you can see it. This is another thing when, you, when you're choking out an animal. Uh, this is your standard cam lock. Uh, I don't know if you can see real clearly though, but really smooth edge on it. Uh, it's still gonna do its job. It's gonna bite down and, and hold the cable. Um, but when that animal relaxes, it does have a tendency to loosen up and allow the snare to loosen. Therefore, you don't have quite the, quite the grip on the neck there. Um, Here's another style of a cam lock. They're all out here. This one uh, is equipped with a breakaway, the little S spring there. It's going to be your 300 pound uh, deer breakaway. Um, if you can see the edge of that, uh, it's going to have little serrated blades on it. Um, those blades, when this tightens down, are going to clamp into that cable and give you the necessary holding power so that when that animal starts to relax, this snare won't back off. Uh, you can hardly get these things off uh, just short of cutting the cable on this side and, and then releasing them. Uh, so you're going to see they bite down into your cable pretty well. I have been able to reuse uh, snares that have, have got these uh, smooth bladed cam locks on them. Uh, from one animal to the next, I can catch an animal in it and, and reset it. So, I mean, that, that ought to tell you something as far as holding power. Uh, you know, the idea is once you get an animal choked down, you don't need that snare backing off or loosening up, loosening up to any degree. So, um, if you can get a hold of some cam locks, I know a lot of guys will sit there with a the little chainsaw file and they'll file those grooves in them cam locks. Uh, it's, it's kind of a pain to do her that way, but uh, you know when, when you start talking holding power, that's that's kind of the name of the game there. So, um, should you end up in a position that, say, your anchor cable and your snare length aren't going to put you long enough for for your set, maybe you're you know, a few inches short. Um, We'll use a 8 to 10. I mean, it's good to have different length um, extension cables in, in your bag of tricks. I think this one here is probably 10, 10 inches. 
it's got a swivel on it. So if you don't have a swivel on your snare, if you don't have a swivel on your anchor, you add one of these in, you're, you're then going to have a swivel. All right, just a couple more things. This is pretty impromptu, so we're just kind of going and <laughs> making things up as we go along. Um, if I had more time, I'd, I'd do a couple of these and get a good, a good one for you. Um, the other thing I do do, uh, you obviously see how shiny these snares are. Um, it really is a good idea to take your logwood die, uh, go ahead and die your traps. I don't like any of the dies that use the gasoline base or or lye or anything like that. I like the, the logwood die. It's uh, basically put it in water and it smells like a campfire. Um, that smell goes away pretty fast, but you're going to see a lot of these cheap ec economical uh, dyes that you actually use a gallon of kerosene and, and, and then their dye supplement. And, you know, it's a petroleum product that uh, smells going to stay with it a long time when you're talking petroleum product. Um, another thing I like to do if you know, you always want to have a few snares on hand, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll run 50 or 60 snares when I'm out in my bag, so, so just so that you're not constantly fumbling with snares, getting your scent on them. I'll usually do three or four snares at a time. I'll zip tie them when they're, when they're all ready to be set. Uh, that way they're not going to get all tied up and have a big rat's nest in your strapping bag. Um, I do want to show you a couple of cables that have frayed in the past. I got one here actually that, that has actually held too. Um, this was this one had actually caught a coyote. This you can you can see it's still folded over. Uh, kind of took some of the the actual shape out of the snare itself or the cable itself. This this was properly set where we had two sides wearing against each other. Um, so that uh, you know it. It's a little worse for wear, but, but it held the animal without fraying or breaking. Um, this would be a snare that uh, obviously was, was set as I was showing you with the loop going one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And you can see how that snare will actually fray when, when it's allowed to ride against each other. It's just uh, mangled ends and you know there was a couple strands holding at the end but uh, it wouldn't have been long and if that animal hadn't have choked out it would have been gone so again I think this is, is what's happening with your cables uh, you know they're getting a kink in the cable if, if you don't have a swivel on it you're gonna get a kink or a loop in there and and uh, that's just going to start the process the outer layers will will break first and then by the time you're down to your center cords you got half the cable you started with so then they they will pull straight off um, what else? I guess that's about it. You know, a, lot of, a lot of guys all have their their own ways of of uh, hanging snares. I've got just a uh, oh, it's about a seven and six or seven inch lag bolt uh, with piece number nine wire um, welded to it. This allows me to beat it in the ground. Now the surface area on the actual lag part of the screw, my theory in the past has been that that gives you enough surface area on your ground to, to properly support that um, guide wire so that you're, you're not running around. So once you pound this in the ground, you know obviously wolves this is going to be a little short. This is probably 24 inches the number 9 wire. Uh, you're probably going to want closer to 36 on wolves so you can get up to the height you need to. Um, because number nine wire is, is kind of a trapper's best friend. It's flexible. You can shape it the way you want. Uh, you could run it up and you could actually, if you had enough, pull your cover down so that you're concealing that and then just wrap this around it. So you can use that to hold your brush to, to um, camouflage your set and still hang your snare off of that. Um, that's about all we have here. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to think of some stuff later. So I may do another short video a little bit later, but uh, certainly be willing to answer some questions. I know this is kind of impromptu, and some of it may make sense and some of it may not, but uh, I'm sure do a lot better explaining if I, if I knew what your concerns were and, and things that you weren't real clear of. So we need to get everybody out there and, and trapping and catching. And, and like I said before, we, we don't want to educate these animals. Uh, we we want to make sure we get in and catch them once and uh, 
get rid of them at that point. We don't need them running around once we caught them once. So, uh, anyhow, uh, that's about it for now, and uh, hope you enjoyed that. We'll we'll sure take your uh, suggestions of anything else you'd like to see and uh, make some videos on that.